Greetings all. Welcome to a fresh hour of CBS Sports HQ. That right there, that's Akeem Dermish. I'm Russ Thaler. The NBA's in-season tournament's heading to Vegas for the semis and finals. But baseball's hot stove. That's what's nearing a boil as the winter meetings in Nashville heat up. Yeah, nearing is the key word because oftentimes we hear two teams are nearing a deal and it'll be finalized soon. Depends on your definition of soon because after hours of being on hold, a deal between the Yankees and Padres finally got done for Juan Soto. The hot stove piping hot in the Bronx. Slugger Juan Soto headed to the Yankees. According to our Jim Bowden, New York is sending pitchers Michael King, Johnny Brito, Randy Vasquez, number five prospect and pitcher Drew Thorpe, along with catcher Kyle Higashioka in exchange for Soto and outfielder Trent Grisham. Soto in his final year of arbitration projected to make 33 million bucks next season will become a free agent after the 2024 season. He played in all 162 games this past year, hit 35 home runs, 109 RBIs, and he's led the majors in walks each of the last three seasons. As you take a look at the trade details for Juan Soto, Juan Soto going to be wearing pinstripes. Here's CBS Sports Baseball insider Jim Bowden. The New York Yankees have done an incredible job landing Juan Soto and outfielder Trent Grisham from the San Diego Padres in a seven-player transaction. They made this deal without giving up a top outfield prospect, a top infield prospect, or their top pitching prospect, Chase Hampton, which is the amazing part of this deal. The Yankees did have to give up Michael King, who was expected to go right into the Padres' rotation. One of their top pitching prospects, Drew Thorpe, as well, and their backup catcher, Kyle Higashioka, who was expected to get a lot of playing time behind the dish for the San Diego Padres. Now, for the Padres, they will save some between 33 and 38 million dollars on this deal which helps them financially and obviously getting this many pitchers in one deal helps them after they had lost five pitchers off their major league roster to free agency but the big story here is the New York Yankees who gets one of the best hitters in baseball a player that always has an on base percentage north of 400 and this is a guy playing at Yankee Stadium that profiles into a 50 home run guy or more with a high on base percentage and hitting him ahead of Aaron Judge gives them the best offensive duo in the sport. You will not be able to pitch around Soto again. The walks will come down because Judge is hitting behind him. And to watch Soto and Judge and Stanton back to back to back, I mean, I can envision 180 home runs. <laughs> Maybe not quite that number, but it's going to be awful fun to watch. The Yankees did a great job landing Soto in this deal, and the Padres uh, did what they had to do both financially and to try to rebuild their pitching staff. Juan Soto to the New York Yankees, and look, the porch in right field at Yankee Stadium, 314. Juan Soto should be visiting that porch often next season. He's hit well in a small sample size at Yankee Stadium, was one of the best road hitters in the majors last season. 23 of his 35 homers came on the road this past year, and again, led the majors in walks. In fact, he's led the bigs in walks each of the last three seasons. And for more, welcome in former Marlins president David Sampson. Juan Soto to the Yankees felt like a lock as soon as the World Series is over. Now the deal is done. David, what's your reaction to the trade and what this means for the Yankees? Well, my first reaction is the Yankees are absolutely going all in by getting Juan Soto <clears throat> for one year only. And yes, they didn't give up their top prospects. Of course not, because he's a rental player. For the Padres, they had to move Soto to lower their payroll. And his stay with the Padres was not all that successful for the team. Baseball is a team sport. So while the Yankees definitely have a better lineup and they needed hitting because their offense was so anemic last season, they did not have to give up a lot because they're taking on 30 plus million dollars and one year of service for a player. Soto represented by Scott Boris and you remember in 2022 he turned down a 15 year 440 million dollar from the Nationals. He ain't getting that now. If you're in the Yankees front office are you trying to get a deal done with Soto before we get deep into the season. I don't see how you can even try to get a deal done because if so they would have absolutely tampered already with Scott Boris with Juan Soto to see if there's any possibility of a deal to get done because the Padres would want to know that because then they could ask for more and then the Yankees would have given up a better prospect their top pitching prospect etc. 
The reason why Boris doesn't like doing it is there's no availability to, for Soto's ceiling until they see where Otani signs, and he wants to nudge Soto right in under Otani. And so until Otani signs, why would Soto sign at all? So you're going to wait to see, literally your catchphrase, wait to see about negotiating a deal with Juan Soto. I have to believe that I don't have a great shot of retaining him because of all of the big contracts I have. And we have to talk about the money here, Dermish. The Yankees are taking on a huge amount, putting them higher over the luxury tax as a repeat offender. There's a huge cost to having a payroll where the Yankees have a payroll. This is a win now. Hal Starbender says to Boone and Cashman, I mean N-O-W now, not next year, not the year after, this very second. There is so much pressure on the Yankees, and we can ignore the AL East, but that would be at our peril. Yeah, the Yankees have not reached the World Series since 2009 when they won it for their MLB record 27th World Series title. And you mentioned the payroll. They've got, of course, Aaron Judge at 40 million next year. Giancarlo Stanton at 32 million. Garrett Cole at 36 million. Carlos Rodon at nearly 28 million dollars. And it's going to be Soto with another 30 million dollar deal. The Yankees sound like they're okay with going over the threshold of $300 million because they're in the mix for Japanese pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto. According to an MLB Network report, he's expected to meet with the Yankees on Monday. Could Soto and Yamamoto be the players that put the Yankees over the top in terms of being a competitor and getting back to the World Series? When you say over the top, they're already over the top. Do you mean over the over the over the top? I guess when you're the Yankees and you've got the pressure where you've got to get it done this year, and the owner is willing to let the GM and managers succeed with having the payroll at the Steve Cohn level, then I guess that's over the top. But I would remind you again that Juan Soto, we're talking about the protection with Judge and with Stanton and with Rizzo. Juan Soto was not with a bunch of schleppers in San Diego. That was an amazing lineup, too, and they did not advance to the playoffs at all. So in baseball, you need a full team, and getting Yamamoto would certainly help the depth of their rotation. But you mentioned a guy named Rodon. People don't forget they signed him last year. He's got to perform, and no one's going to talk about that, but you got to be three deep if you're going to try to get a ring in October, and that's why he probably is the most important player for the Yankees next year. Yankees were 25th in runs per game last season uh, averaging just over four runs per game that's not going to get it done but when you take a look at that lineup as a fan you're excited <laughs> right like I, I'm not even a Yankee fan I'm excited to see what that lineup can do because that lineup has the possibility the potential to be one of the best lineups in all of baseball how do you view that as a former executive there's no question. It feels so good in December. I remember signing players in the offseason, winning the offseason. You look at your lineup on a board and you stare at it. The manager's drawing out lineups. The GM is dreaming about what the rates of return are going to be. We heard our own Jim Bowden say 180 home runs. That is awesome how a GM can think during the course of an offseason. And then the game starts. And then injuries happen and lack of performance, etc. But yes, it's good to feel good right now right now and that is a great lineup i would mention the angels not bad with trout and otani not one playoff victory it's very hard to win in baseball it is it is very hard to win in baseball but the yankees making a run here as they get a huge get in the offseason signing and trading for juan soto in a big deal from the padres the deal finally gets done juan soto headed to the bronx david sampson break it down for us here on cbs sports hq All right, here's a look at the odds to win next year's World Series. And, and look, just because you're on this page, you know, it doesn't mean you're, you know, you're going to win the World Series. I mean, the Braves are the favorites to win the World Series this past season. They, what happened to them? They knocked out by the Phillies. Uh, Rangers won the World Series over the Diamondbacks. I mean, they're not even on this full screen. Yankees 
with the fifth best odds to win the World Series. Consider they were plus 1,200 on Tuesday. They get Juan Soda. They make the trade. Also going to get Trent Grisham as well as some outfield help and an extra bat off the bench. Plus 950 to win the World Series. But on this day, they win the day, acquiring three-time All-Star Juan Soto.